So you're applying to go to medical school. You spent four years in undergrad and more maybe after. You didn't just take classes, take the right tests, and then apply. There's so many different activities that you did along the way. How do you write about them to show to medical schools and admission committees? You didn't just randomly do them, you chose to do these specific activities and you kept coming back to get more and more experience. So how do you explain why you did them and what you learned from them for your upcoming 2022 MCAS and a Comus application? So please be sure to like and subscribe because we're on the goal to 100 subscribers. So be ready as we embark on the journey of MD in the making. What's up YouTube, hope you're having a great day. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Jason Krasin. I'm an incoming first year medical student and I'm sharing all the tips that I've learned in my last application cycle to help you guys prepare to make a stellar, outstanding applicant. But before we get into all the nitty gritty of it all, let me know, do you guys like this background? Or this. Or this background? Or this. So leave a comment down below. Let me know which one you guys like better. So if you're applying to medical school, there's two different routes you can take. You can apply to MD or DO school. Now, both of those applications are very similar, but there's some slight nuances that I'm gonna clarify here. For the AMCAS application, or for MD school, you have 700 characters to write about 15 experiences. Of those 15 experiences, you can choose up to three most meaningful, in which you can expand upon by 1,325 characters. Now for DO school, or the ACOMAS application, you have 600 characters per activity. So I'm gonna focus on mainly the AMCAS application because that's where I spent a lot of my time. So in the activity section, you're supposed to cover what you learned, what you did, who you worked with, and what you gained from this experience. Now for MD school, you only have a space for 15 separate activities. Now medical schools know when you're just trying to expand it to fill it up. So if you can't hit all 15, that's not a problem at all. Now, when you're writing out your activities, you have to categorize them in 18 different categories listed here. So now you have your list of activities. What committee members want to know is how much time you spent, what your responsibilities and accomplishments were, the impact that you made, and the overall qualities that you demonstrate. Now, if you guys watched my previous video and I harped at it a lot there, you have to show, not tell, the qualities that you're trying to demonstrate. So from all the resources that I found and in writing my own activity sections, I realized how vital it was not to just list all that I did while at that activity. You're not trying to make a laundry list of all the cool responsibilities that you held. So I'm gonna share with you guys how to write your activity section in order to not just list stuff out, but to actually make it stand out for the admissions committee. So now let's jump to my own activity section and let's break it down based on different categories. The first one I wanna talk about is my paid employment in medical and clinical setting. Now in this activity, I describe my time that I spent at Amgen now, as you guys can see here, I've noted it as one of my most meaningful activities. And I think it was a unique activity in that it really showed that I didn't want to go down the research route and that I felt being in that research setting was too far removed from actually spending time with patients. And I think noting that there really puts a stronger emphasis on my time that I spent volunteering or in a clinical setting. The next section that I want to highlight is my honors or awards. So this section is just gonna be a quick laundry list. You don't need to give too much of a description for what their awards are, unless they aren't self-explanatory, as you guys can see here. As far as contact information for this activity, I would recommend putting your ad academic advisor at your institution. The third category is my poster presentation. So in this description, I just talked about what the event was and what I was able to share in that poster time. The next category, shadowing. So in this category, I want you guys to note that I did not describe all that I did, all that I learned from this activity. A lot of medical school and admissions committees know what shadowing is. They know you're just able to sit back and observe. You're not really doing things hands-on. So what I would recommend putting down is the doctor they shadowed, a brief description of what kind of work they do, their specialty, provide a phone number so that way admissions committees can contact, as well as put in a rough estimate of the time that you spent there. The next category is my paid employment in a non-clinical and non-medical setting. A little backstory, when I was younger, I used to play hockey and soccer, but as I grew up, I decided to stick with soccer. Then in college, while I was overwhelmed with studying for organic chemistry, I found peace and relaxation in going and skating around at the local ice rink. 
after going for weeks and weeks at a time, the manager was able to offer me a job to help work at the ice rink. And so I was one of the guys riding the Zamboni and cleaning up the ice. But what was really unique about this activity was that they held a special ice time for kids and young adults with special needs to come out and play the beautiful game. So I was able to be a part of that and interact with these amazing people who week in and week out always had a smile on their face and always lit up my day. The next category was my time in intercollegiate soccer. Now you guys will also note that this is another one of my most meaningful activities. And I chose this as one of my most meaningful activities because it was a big maturing and growing point for me. Having played soccer my whole life, I was always a competitive athlete. And so in my freshman year, when I realized that I wasn't gonna be getting minutes, that was a tough pill to swallow. So one of the main things I learned from it was that I wasn't gonna make as big of an impact on my collegiate team as I was for my club team. And so that's why I chose to drop down to the club level and help support that program, a program that I felt helped build people up rather than focus just on the sport itself. Now the last category that I wanna cover is my community service or volunteer, specifically in a clinical setting. So if you guys have watched my previous video, I talk about my personal statement in which I dive deeper into the specific activity and a specific experience within that. Now I absolutely love this experience and I was very grateful to do it for over seven years. Now one thing that I wanna note is because I wrote about it in my personal statement, I didn't wanna cover it again in my most meaningful category. So I chose to just create a brief description and show from a macro scale what I was able to learn and achieve from it and how it impacted me and my desires to become a physician. So now you guys have seen some examples from my own activity section. I hope this helps you guys see what goes into a successful activity section. But if you guys have any questions, leave a comment or DM me on Instagram. The Instagram is in the link in the description and I'd be more than happy to help review and edit those with you guys. With that being said, thank you guys for tuning in on how to become a standout medical school applicant. Please be sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends all about this as we embark on the journey of MD in the making.